Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you again so much for our time together. I told you that all this month we're coming for the book of Revelation, so let's begin with chapter 12, verse 1 today. A great and wondrous sign appeared in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. His tail swept away a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that he might devour her child at the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the desert to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Now I'm going to stop there today, but I want you just to see how easy the book of Revelation is to understand. Who is this woman? It is national Israel. Remember with me the vision of Joseph with the sun, the moon, and the stars? Well, that's Genesis chapter 37, verse 9. This is the vision that he had, and this is the description of the nation of Israel. Who is the great red dragon? Well, that is Satan. Who is the child that national Israel gave birth to who would rule the nations? That is Jesus. This section was fulfilled when Jesus was born and Satan was there immediately to try to kill him and all the rest of the children at Bethlehem. The catching up into heaven, that is Ephesians 1.20 where Jesus now sits at the right hand of the Father. So the book of Revelation is very easy to understand, but let me apply this to you a little bit today. I want you to understand a few things. Number one, there's a reason as Christians we don't have dragons in our houses. There's a reason as Christians we don't celebrate dr things of dragons. Now you say, well, pastor, in the Chinese culture, well, s sometimes we have to remember that we're not Pinoy, we're not Caucasian, we're not Chinese, we're not uh, Guatemalan, we're not Venezuelan, we're not Australian, we are Christian. As Christians, we do not honor the dragon. Now, yes, we may honor the lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, we may have other little animal carvings around our house, but never a dragon because the dragon always represents Satan in the scripture. A second thing I want you to see here, Satan has always hated Jesus. Satan wanted to kill Jesus from the time he was born. Satan worked Jesus' whole life to try to kill him, never understanding, never understanding that that act of selfless love is what would ultimately defeat him. And there at Golgotha, all the weapons of sat the satanic army, the one-third of the angels here that is described, is brought and laid at Jesus' feet. There's a truth here I want you to see. Things of the demonic will never understand generosity. Things of the demonic will never understand selfless acts. Things of the demonic will never understand love because that's not their firmware. Their firmware is to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, if you can begin to understand that, it's very easy to recognize God from the devil. It's very easy to recognize good from evil. Evil has no generosity without hooks attached. Evil has no selflessness in it. 